Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Rock and Roll Stock with my review of the Predator. Um, we're uh, went and saw the Predator yesterday. Uh, so that's this will be a spoiler for your review. Um, but anyways, let's get to it, shall we? So, what's the movie about? Um, after a, yacht, a yacht ship crashes on Earth. Parties both terrestrial and extraterrestrial attempt to lay claim to, to it. Um, overall, it's an all right continuation to the franchise. I mean, if you really don't give too much of a sh too much of a shit about the franchise, I guess. Um, anyway, cast of note: Boyd Holbrook as Quinn McKenna. Uh, an army sniper encountered encounter a Yaucha and stole its helmet and wrist gauntlet. Well, one of its wrist gauntlets. Uh, being made a passage for the deaths of his unit at the hands of, of said Yaucha. Cravante uh, Rhodes as the brat, as the Rascal Rhodes. A uh, member of the U Unit 2 or the Loonies. Um, he's there because he shot a CO. Jacob Tremblay is Rory McKenna, Quinn's autistic son and recipient of the stolen Yacha gear. Keegan Michael Key as Coyle, an ex Marine and member of the of the Loonies. Pritch always tells jokes. Olivia Munn as uh, Casey Brackett, biologist brought in to help Project Stargazer, ends up helping the Loonies. Um, also, potentially could be could end up becoming an exobiologist. Uh, Sterling K. Brown as Traeger, field operator for Project Stargazer, uh, tracks down and later teams up with the Loonies against the Yaksha. And to be perfectly honest, the most interesting character in the whole damn movie. Uh, Thomas James Baxley, an ex Marine. A uh, member of uh, the Loonies, uh, he has Tourette syndrome, which is in the in the movie is pretty much just kind of that generic version of Tourette's that uh, you know uncontrollable swearing basically, or saying saying uh, potentially offensive things uncontrollably. It's uh, yeah. Alfie Allen is Lynch, uh, don't remember the loonies. Claims he helps in entropy along, also. There's magic tricks. A little sleight of hand with, you know, playing cards, that kind of thing. Uh, Augusta Aguilera as uh, Nettles, member of the loonies who claims that the end times are here. Jake Busey as Sean Keyes, son of the late Peter Keyes of the Other World Lifeform Task Force from Predator 2. Works for Project Stargazer. Uh, from what we can tell in the movie, much less of a field operative than his father. And finally, we got Yvonne uh, Straho Strahovski as Emily, Quinn's estranged wife and Roy's mother. Okay, so let's move on to the spoiler free breakdown. Act one um, int introduces the characters and plots. Um, Quinn. While on a mission, uh, I want to say, it looked, it seemed like he was in Mexico, uh, Quinn and uh, his unit, or Quinn sees a uh, Yaucha ship basically on its way of crash landing. Uh, one of the pods drops near him and uh, it's inhabited. He snags the uh, helmet and one of the, the left wrist gauntlet. And um, injures the Yaucha after it kills two members of his unit. Um, he arranges to have the helmet and wrist gauntlet sent to his P.O. box as evidence. And he's then arrested. And uh, evaluated by the uh, by Veteran Affairs. Basically, you know, Renov is being crazy, and basically, and put him with 
the loonies. Um, let's say, meanwhile, um, Casey Brackett is uh, approached by Project Stargazer and brought to uh, brought to check out the Yautja, which they had captured. Um, also, uh, Rory receives his uh, well because he because Rory, uh, Quinn hasn't paid up on his on his PO box. Everything in it is brought and taken to his home, so it, Rory ends up uh, in possession of the helmet and uh, wrist gauntlet, which he starts messing around with and actually has. Yeah, anyway. Act two. Uh, the. Super Yaucha, the best way to describe it, arrives on Earth and as the leading to the captive Yaucha awakening uh, and slaughtering his way out of Project Stargazer to uh, try to retrieve his stolen gear. Um, just what happens is Halloween and the stolen gear is being worn by Rory as a Halloween costume. Also, um, Bracket uh, makes her way out and observes that the Yaucha will, when, when, as she's unarmed and posing no threat, the Yaucha will not, you know, he's not going to mess with her, so he leaves her alone. Uh, she ends up, uh, she takes some uh, samples from uh, Project Stargazer and ends up uh, joining up with, ends up joining the Loonies. Uh, as they are on their way to uh, get get the stuff, for, get the gear from McKenna's son or from Quinn's son. Um, <sighs> while trick or treating, an incident occurs, which uh, basically activates the helmet's built-in weaponry, blowing up a, basically a house. Uh, the loonies catch up to Rory at his school, as do the two Yaucha, um, who eventually fight one another. Uh, the super Yaucha kills the captive Yaucha, the, well, formerly captive Yaucha. Brackett makes a, a very, a, a second startling discovery. It's, there was one made at, at Stargate, Project Stargazer. About the samples she took with her when leaving Project, when leaving Project Stargazer. Uh, Act three, as as the loonies, along with Bracket and Rory, try to lay low, they are found and taken captive by Traeger, who learns that Rory potentially knows where the uh, cra crash the Yakuza ship is. So Traeger takes Rory and leaves the loonies, and as well as Bracket, to be executed by his men. However, the executions go south, go figure, and loonies, as well as the Super Yaucha, make their way to the crash site. In Act 4, um, first we start off with a fight between Traeger and his men and the loonies, but when the Super Yaucha appears and starts uh, wrecking a house, Traeger and uh, McKenna decide, hey, we'll, we'll join forces. And which leads to eventually the death of the super, the super Yaucha, and pretty much the entirety of the two of the two squads. All right, so ups and downs in the movie. First off, you know, what did I like? Um, it acknowledges every Predator movie, uh, at least that takes place on Earth. I can understand it, the, why it doesn't really acknowledge Predators. Um, at best, there's the odd coincidence that a handful of uh, military operators from different countries, as well as a general, as well as a doctor, vanished all at the same time. Or and a uh, oh yeah, and don't let's not forget and a and a serial killer 
all vanish on death row, all vanish at once. Um, there, that's there. There is that. It, 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 that should be a red flag to anyone. Like, huh? This happened. Also, probably Edwin's kill. The killings Edwin was was, create, was committing suddenly stopped about the same time. But still, it doesn't take place on Earth, so there's really nothing to say about it. But uh, at the same time, it was also saying that eight years later, Royce and Isabel either are still on the plant, the game reserve, or they've come back and they just don't talk about what happened. They just never, never talk to anybody about, about what happened. Um, it was kind of cool seeing getting uh, the Yaucha language subtitled. Um, And I'm sure now we're going to end up seeing a lot of uh, attempts at fully translating their language. Um, hell, it was just kind of, it was really neat to see human and Yaucha interaction that's more than just hand signals. Uh, such as in uh, Alien vs. Predator when um, our two survivors, they, the, the uh, Yaucha kind of, you know, explains explains the bomb on his arm, you know, kind of, you know. Like, oh, and she's, oh, it's a bomb. I gotcha. But so it was really neat to see, to see the language, to see it actually subtitled as, a, as an actual language. Um, there was some pretty decent action scenes. Um, they're really muddled though. That's kind of, the, but anyway. Decent visual effects. Um, there's a good mix of both practical and uh, CGI, so that that's always good. Um, most of the characters are pretty fun to watch. Uh, then they work well together. Um, anyways, moving on to the downsides of the movie. It's a bit more tongue-in-cheek than I would would have liked. Um, Predator, Predator 2, Predators. These are all sci-fi horror action movies. Clearly. Um, this is an action comedy, a sci-fi action comedy, with some gore to, you know, give it some... And a, a brief kind of, you know, tense, scary moment. But it's more of a comedy than anything, an action comedy than anything else. And that's kind of annoying. Um, it's like not... I understand that, and that, of course, that, you know, best way, you know, to utilize or to explain that away. Oh, hey, we, most of our protagonists are crazy. Are crazy. See, so yeah, yeah. Ha -ha. Um, it's really hard to care about a lot of the character deaths. I mean, partially because they just happen so quickly. But uh, yeah. Um. Oh, the callbacks. Some of the callbacks were just plain bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate a callback to, a, you know, in a movie. I really do, you know. A nice little nod to, you know, what's come before. But, and, and I had the same problem with Predators. Is that... They went a little too far, and it just kind of okay. All right, let's let's try and work on our own stuff for once. This, oh god, it, oh yeah. There are two really noteworthy ones that are just oh cringeworthy. Um. The climax, uh, Quinn uh, beating the uh, Super Yaucha, 
the way it happens, it seems so just, you know, so convenient. I mean, I know, we, you know, things are supposed, uh, most movies, oh yeah, the good guy wins. No, this is like, aspects of his victory, just like, oh, hey, now this is here, I can use this now. And it, uh, yeah, it, I mean, there's a deus ex, there's a huge deus ex machina up to it that just, ugh. Um, it really, really fucks with the lore and mythos of the Predator franchise. Um, I initially said twists it, but no, no, it straight up fucks with it, and that I really, really did not like, and it, uh, that was, it was, oh, it was just really poorly done, and uh, the ending kind of sets up for potential sequels, and I guess I'll, I'll probably watch those, um, but, I don't like the direction they're taking the franchise in. Um, on the technical side of things, there are some really bad and noteworthy edit, continuity editing problems. And, I mean, if you're, if you're just paying attention to the screen when they happen, you're going to notice them. Um... And, uh, you remember how I said Traeger was the most interesting character in the movie? I would have loved it if the movie focused, was, if he was the lead character. As it stands, on his own, McKenna is a very bland character. Um, dude who plays him was, uh, the villain in, uh, Logan. He played Donald Pierce. And he was actually really good in that. So what the... What the hell happened, man? I mean... He went from being a really... Uh, solid villain. Hell, uh, He was a well-done ver live-action version of a classic... Egg of a classic comic book villain. Um, I... Hell, I wouldn't mind seeing... A more... A version... I wouldn't mind seeing Boyd Holbrook play... A more a, a version of uh, Donald Pierce closer to the comics, even. The, to be perfectly honest, the without the Hellfire, it, it's just, that was just you know skipping the Hellfire Club bit with him. So, anyways, overall opinion. Um, to be perfectly honest, I went with low expectations, and it was better than I expected it to be. It's not AVP bad. But it's still, for the solo movies, it's definitely a low point. And I think we're going to get an even, I'm afraid we're going to end up with an even lower point in the years to come. I was glad to see the entire franchise uh, acknowledged for once. Um, more often, cause I, I'm not surprised when... Uh, I wasn't surprised that Predators just kind of ignored AVP. I can understand ignoring AVP. But they also... It, it did irk me that they ignored um, Predator 2. This really clearly does not ignore Predator 2. If for no other reason, keys. But they straight up say, you know... They came here in 1987, 1997. It was like, ah, oh, hey, all right, yeah, we get, we're... And like I said, it meant, it is an acknowledgement of ADP, and that, that was really kind of cool. Um, I might, I'm not the biggest fan of the ADP movies. I, I think they could have been done a whole hell of a lot better, but like I said, I was glad to see them acknowledged. Um, 
if if you like big dumb action movies, you know what? You'll you'll love this. Especially you know big dumb action movies that just can't stop to, can't stop joking uh, for five minutes. Yeah, you'll love this. If you're a fan of the Predator franchise specifically, or you know, if the Predator franchise is a is a, is a movie franchise that you really enjoy, you're probably going to be disappointed. So anyway, uh, overall rating, this is not going to. Uh, I'm not usually going to split something, but um, there will be times, yeah, like 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 now, where yeah, two point five out of five. It's it's not horrible. I've seen much worse movies, but it's nothing spectacular either. I mean, it's just kind of eh, and. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see if uh, how the box office does on it, and um, maybe we'll end up with yet another Predator movie in, in a few years. Anyway, um, so tomorrow we're gonna build. The, we're gonna do a building the team video, the one that we meant to do yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Anyway, um, that's all I got for today. Um, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my social media and Patreon are in the description box down below. Also, be sure to hit that uh, bell icon. Be notified when I put up new videos uh, and or when, uh, I, when I go live. Um, well, this, is, this is Rock and Roll Spock signing off. Uh, saying... Live long and rock hard.